Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are working on Charmed Graphic 45's latest collection, and we're on page seven. Page seven. So, page seven is the same mechanisms as page two, and if you recall, we did a couple of things um, first. So, one of the first things we're going to do is put a one inch strip right here. And then we're gonna add a flap that's gonna be inset a little bit and it's gonna rest on top of this strip. So we're gonna start, like I said, by adding this strip. So <clears throat> the strip is one inch wide. I have a tick mark here at one and one. So there's my one inch, but then I'm gonna offset it a little bit, which means that that edge is gonna be slightly under the flap that we install. little too much glue. Okay. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now that I have this down and I've got my tick mark here at one, I wanted to find my center line <clears throat> on what's left visually. So <clears throat> I took my ruler and if you measure from the tick mark to the end, that's nine inches. And if you split that in half, that's gonna be four and a half inches. That's my center line. So the next thing I'm gonna do is put a one inch strip that runs uh, vertical right here. And I've got this. So it's just gonna go right here. And it's gonna be kind of the same thing. Uh, part of a flap is gonna rest on top of this. So offset one inch, take the balance, nine inches, divide it in half, find your center line, and then this one inch strip is gonna go right in the center. So you're gonna have a half inch on either side. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm gonna erase my pencil marks, and a kneaded eraser works so well. Okay, so we're gonna start with a flap over here. So you're gonna need two flaps this size. This flap is four and three quarters, four and three quarters by eight. You're gonna score a half inch on the four and three quarter inch side. And it's gonna get installed flush with the right hand side. I had to think about that for a second. Flush with the right hand side. This page. Yeah, that's right. I had to think it through. So the side that we have this one inch strip on is uh, on the spine side, and this is on the pocket side. So there we go. So again, you're gonna need two four and three quarter by eight, square half inch on the four and three quarter inch side. So the second one is gonna go right here. And it's gonna get installed at our one inch mark. And I erased my mark, so I'm just gonna use my grid to line it up. But it should rest slightly on top of this score line should be slightly on top of this decorative strip. Does that look right? Something's not quite right. So that's a half, okay, there we go. Okay, looks good. Actually, it's not good. I'm off, I'm off quite a bit. So I'm gonna lift this and move it over. And this time I'm gonna mark it because uh, it didn't come in an inch. And it matters because everything is built uh, on the dimensions of these first two flaps. 
So if I don't get those straight, everything else goes wonk, goes wonky. I haven't burnished it, so I'm hoping I can just lift it. Oops, I tore my paper. I was hoping I could just lift it. I'm gonna have to replace that paper now. So, which I can do, we can do. I got plenty of it. So I'm gonna take this off. What I care about is this outside edge. Everything else is gonna be under a flap or something. So I wanna make sure if the paper tears, it's tearing toward the inside. Ideally it wouldn't tear at all, but if it's gonna tear, I don't want it to tear into um, into the mat area. Sorry, I was having a hard time finishing this sentence there. And as usual, I'm gonna leave all this in so you can see anything can be fixed. So basically you see where all the squiggly glue lines are. So I need to cut another one inch strip. This time I'm gonna measure where my one inch mark is so I don't have to go through this again. Oh, I just realized something. So the reason I had a problem when I was doing it this way is this is metric and this is inches. So they're not equal. <laughs> these, square, these are not squares, they're actual rectangles. They're longer than they are tall. So there's there's where my problem was. I'm like, how could I make such a dumb mistake? real ruler, one that I know I can trust. I'm going to mark it at one inch and I'm going one inch from the edge of the pocket page, not the designer paper. Pencil. Which for some reason I don't, here it is, see. Okay, there's my one inch mark. I got a little paper on here. I'm just going to add some glue and put this down. Double check and make sure it's the right. Yeah. So again, four and three quarter by eight, four and three quarter by eight. I'm going to add this score line right to that one inch line. That looks right. There we go, back on track. Okay, so we've got both our left and right flap on. Again, these are four and three quarter by eight. Now we're going to add our secondary flap and it is four and five eighths by eight. Four and five eighths by eight. So it's basically one eighth inch um, narrower. Four and five eighths by eight. Score a half inch on the four and five eighths inch side. <clears throat> So the goal is to have it clear of the score line here, but to have it completely hidden 
once this flap is closed. And it should work out to be about an eighth of an inch right there. Okay. So if you're uncomfortable with that, just fold back a corner, tuck this under the first flap, make it flush on the bottom and tucked under the top flap. And then pull your tab. There we go. Okay, we're gonna add some pockets on top, but first let's go ahead and add a magnet. So there's going to be a set of magnets for each set of flaps. Okay, so the next thing is we're going to add a pocket here and a pocket here, which I don't know what it, it is, and a pocket over here. So this pocket's actually going to go on the leading edge of the flap, like so. like I've got more than one magnet. It feels really tall for some reason. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna turn it this way so I can see three of the four edges. So this um, vertical pocket is being applied to the right hand side, then we have a horizontal pocket. No, I said that wrong. I guess it depends on how you look at it. <laughs> I say this is vertical because it's going this way and horizontal because the openings, it's based on the openings itself. Um, not, this, not the orientation of the rectangle. Um, this, oh, I forgot to tell you, this is three, let me double check. Nope, it's, yeah, three and a quarter by nine, three and a quarter by nine for the pocket. And then this pocket is five and a quarter by six and a half, five and a quarter across by six and a half inches tall. So five and a quarter by six inches. And you're gonna score on three sides. Same thing with this pocket here. go flush with the bottom and the two sides. I'm not convinced this is a single magnet. It just feels so thick. It is. Why does that feel so fat? Uh, did I use it? Yeah, I used the wrong size magnet. I used a bigger magnet than normal. That's why it felt so fat. 
Yeah, definitely. Okay, that makes sense. I have some thicker magnets, which I don't like to use because they're so bulky, but I had one mixed in with my, oh, I did that like I knew where it was supposed to go. <laughs> That feels right, although I messed up, and that's two magnets. I messed up uh, my tape. I think this is a fat magnet too. I must have just picked up two of the wrong magnets. Sorry about that. Yep, that's a little bit thicker. What a difference. The other ones are almost twice as thick. They're super strong, but they're so thick. They really show up um, underneath your project. Oh, did I drop it? Usually it sticks to my mat because my mat's magnetized. All right, sorry about that. I had to do everything twice there. Okay, there we go. All right, so this is going to have an insert. I went ahead and decorated it. I used eight by eight collection pack for this. This is from the 12 by 12, but the pumpkin black and orange is from the eight by eight. This is four inches across and it's seven and a half inches tall and it's gonna go in this pocket as an insert. Over here, the insert is eight inches across by seven inches tall, eight by seven, and it's gonna go into this pocket. This strip right here, is one and a one and a quarter inches, and this happened to be a piece of scrap that I had, and the and I chose one and a quarter because I wanted, when it was in the pocket, I wanted to either fully see this pattern, or just this pattern and not both patterns. So that's how that was done. And for the purpose of this pocket, you're going to want the decorative paper on top to be two inches. So this is a two inch strip. If you have a two inch strip on your seven and a half inch insert, you can you see it's gonna um, go past the pocket opening, which is what I wanted. I didn't want two patterns showing through the top. Okay, so where are we now? So I'm gonna take the inserts out. We're gonna start decorating. This is also from the eight by eight collection and it is going to cover the pocket here. Okay, sticking with that theme, I'm pulling in the same pattern for this pocket, also from the 8x8 collection. Um, over here, I want this to be the back of the pocket. And I cut it, I didn't cut it to the right size, so I'm gonna do that real quick. And this leading edge is what's gonna go in the pocket, so I don't need to worry about um, 
inking it. And then uh, this is a bifold, like I said, it is eight by seven. You're gonna score at four inches. And it's gonna go right here in this pocket. Then to decorate this pocket, I have this charmed uh, ephemera card, which I've cardstock backed. This had a frame around it. Uh, let me see if I can get an example uh, that I trimmed down. So basically I took the red frame off of it so that it's narrower and it fits better here. So this is going to be centered here. And so this and this are gonna act as the frame around it. Just putting a quick mark here where I need to stop my glue. Okay, we have our insert here, but we need to put our uh, backing on our pocket, and then we're also gonna decorate our pocket. Hopefully I don't tear my paper. Good, came up. And this is actually gonna go here. It's gonna be lined uh, up with this image. But let's go, and I've already cardstock backed it and added a little extra down on the bottom to make it basically the same size as this. And, I think this is what I was gonna do, I'm pretty sure. Let me see if I've already got a piece cut out that will work. Maybe this. Yes, it will. Okay. No reason to cut into a larger piece if not necessary. Let's see, this is four. This goes in here. Once we have this down, then we can place this. for an eyeball. Needs to come over this way a little. Okay. 
So now we have the A sides done, so we still need to work on all these wonderful flaps on the inside. So I need to go organize my paper and I'll be back shortly and we'll start decorating the inside. So I chose this as the alternate pattern here so that you, you can frame this out with either, either side. You can either pull this in or this in. I think that turned out nice. I like the color combos. I kind of like the black and black on, on either end because it's also, you know, we've got that strip in the middle. Anyways, I'm pleased with the way this turned out. That's page seven. Uh, so I'll be back soon with um, the rest of page seven, the insides of page seven, after I get a little bit more organized, get my edges inked and do at least my preliminary trimming so you guys don't have to sit through most of that. Be back soon. Okay, I lined up most of the B-side. I still have to find something here. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do just yet. But I am using eight by eight here. This is from the Patterns and Solids pack. And I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure I told you this and this are from eight by eight and the black stars are the Patterns pack. Okay, so for the outside um, flap, we're going to use this. And again, it's from the eight by eight collection pack. <clears throat> back and forth on these two. But this flows better with uh, what's on the uh, A side. Pretty, pretty. And then the solid goes here in the middle. And then on this side, we're gonna do a mix um, and right now I'm trying to decide if I like, you know, I think I like the solid better. Originally I was just going to do the pumpkin heads, but I like the solid, um, because there's so much going on here. And purple pumpkins are a little odd. So this was um, a, a bit of scrap that I had, and it turns out that it's one and one and seven eighths inch wide. And what I think I did, in fact, I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll share that with you as soon as I get this down. Um, this is from the uh, 12 by 12 patterns and solid. So I took a 12 by 12 sheet, cut it down to the right height, cut two of these, one for this one and one for over here. And then these two strips were what was left over, or this was what left over and I split it in half to go, to be spread between the two layouts. Hopefully that makes sense. So if you add this, 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 and this, it's 12 inches across. Okay, now we're gonna take this piece and trim it down to fit what's left. This does not show up on the purple very well at all. check it one more time.
going to ink one edge. So the last piece is going to be this. We can close that for now. We can go ahead and get started here. So purple goes in the middle. Okay, the last thing is we're going to trim this down to fit. Voila! So we just need to ink it. Here we are on the last bit. So I want to pick something that's going to work with this color. So let's flip through here and see what we find. Oh, not so much. Well, it's possible. This works. Let's do it. Mm, wait a second, I gotta think about that because I got stars next to stars. Maybe if I have something else that's purple. I know, I know, I got it. I'm gonna pull something from the patterns and solids. That's what we'll use. Sometimes I wish they did patterns and solids in eight by eight. So this must be eight by four, I believe. Seven and seven eighths by four. Let's double check because I think this is four and one eighth. Um, that is correct. And that leaves us with a couple of pieces to sprinkle about.
Isn't that lovely? So, let's see. Do I have any small black? <clears throat> so that's a three by three. So you could stack two three by threes here very easily. Or a three by five centered. Again, three by threes fit here. A four by four would fit with a much smaller border. So I think that works out kind of nice. So these would be either crop down or photos that you make a little bit smaller. And I like when it spans too because I think it actually looks quite good as a mat when it's split down the middle like that. I just think it makes it interesting to look at. So there we go. So we've got our, our inserts and all of our flaps designed and that is page seven, everyone. Be back soon with page eight. Bye-bye.